a son speaks by Ella Wheeler Wilcox mother, sit down, for I have much to say anent this widespread ever-growing theme of woman and her virtues and her rights. I left you for the large, loud world of men, when I had lived one little score of years. I judged all women by you, and my heart was filled with high esteem and reverence for your angelic sex. And for the wives, the sisters, daughters, mothers of my friends I held but holy thoughts. To fallen stars, of whom you told me in our last sweet talk, warning me of the dangers in my path. I gave wide pity as you bade me to, saying their sins harked back to my base sex. Now listen, mother mine, ten years have passed since that clean-minded and pure-bodied youth, thinking to write his name upon the stars, went from your presence. He returns to you fallen from his altitude of thought, hiding deep scars of sins upon his soul, his fair illusions shattered and destroyed. And would you know the story of his fall? He sat beside a good man's honored wife at her own table. She was beautiful as woods in early autumn, full of soft and subtle witcheries of voice and look, his senior, both in knowledge and in years. The boyish admiration of his glance was white as April sunlight when it falls upon a blooming tree until she leaned so close her rounded body sent quick thrills along his nerves. He thought it. Accident, and moved a little. Soon she leaned again. The half-hid beauties of her heaving breast rising and falling under scented lace, the teasing tendrils of her fragrant hair, with intermittent touches on his cheek, changed the boy's interest to a man's desire. She saw that first young madness in his eyes and smiled and fanned the flame. That. Was his fall and as some mangled fly may crawl away and leave his wings behind him in the web, so were his wings of faith in womanhood left in the meshes of her sensuous net. The youth, forced into sudden manhood, went seeking the lost ideal of his dreams. He met, in churches and in drawing rooms, women who wore the mask of innocence in basked in public favor, yet who seemed to find their pleasure playing with men's hearts, as children play with loaded guns. He heard, until the tale fell dull upon his ears. The unsolicited complaints of wives and mothers all unsatisfied with life, while crowned with every blessing earth can give longing for God knows what to bring content, and openly or with appealing look asking for sympathy. The first blind step that leads from wifely honor down to shame, is ofttimes hid with flowers of sympathy. He saw proud women who would flush and pale with sense of outraged modesty if one spoke of the ancient sin before them, bear to all men's sight, or flimsily conceal by veils that bid. Adventurous eyes proceed, charms meant alone for lover and for child. He saw chaste virgins tempt and tantalize, lure and deny, invite and then refuse, and drive men forth half-crazed to wanton's arms. Mother, you taught me there were but two kinds of women in the world the good and bad. But you have been too sheltered in the safe, old-fashioned sweetness of your quiet life, to know how women of these modern days make license of their newfound liberty. Why, I have been more tempted and more shocked by bells and beauties in the social world, by trusted wives and mothers in their homes, than by the women of the underworld who sell their favors. Do you think me mad? No, mother, I am. Sane, but very sad. I miss my boyhood's faith in woman's worth, torn from my heart, by, good folks, of the earth.